Welcome back to the Northwoods Church Matters Podcast. I am Bobby Pell, the lead pastor here at Northwoods, and I am for the first time emceeing this wonderful podcast with my friend Matt Higgins Woo! as our special guest. That's awesome. Yes. I'm so excited. So excited. It feels weird not saying that intro phrase. I'll be honest, it felt weird saying it. Yeah. We should get some more experience. Yeah, I did it as a practice earlier, and Matt said, this is going to be a little more hillbilly of a podcast, <laughs> and I'll be honest, probably so. Hey, that's all right. Probably that's all right. So. People might enjoy the hillbilly edition <laughs> of Northwoods Church Matters. <laughs> <laughs> so I am hosting this podcast and asking questions of Matt because multiple reasons, but one is that Matt's going to be going on a sabbatical, and this is an opportunity for us to ask some questions about the sabbatical. Before I jump into that, though, I want to say congratulations on your D-Man degree. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of work, and you know that too, and just perhaps you can speak into this as well. It's three years of writing a paper, yeah, and, and that's a lot. And I barely got into the finish line. I like I turned my doctoral dissertation in two weeks late, yeah. and it got approved the day before I walked for graduation. I was expecting to receive a letter in the envelope that just says, you will receive your degree later. And I was shocked after I came up the, the stage and looked in the little envelope and there was an actual degree. degree. That's right. So that was a pleasant surprise. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do know the amount of work that is. Yeah. And honestly, Ryan and I were able to be with Dana at your graduation. And when I heard afterwards that you were done with your work, that was a bigger deal to me personally than seeing you walk. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, and, and seeing you walk was great, but I just know what the work means. Yeah. Because when, once you know I'm done with the work, I mean, there is a big sigh of relief. Yeah. One of the things Dr. Solomon said to me that I think was helpful on the seminary's view of things was he kept on saying, this is a representation of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. And they have to make sure that the research that's being conducted is good and it's a good reflection of the seminary right because people are not only going to judge the person doing the dissertation they're judging the work of the seminary and people are going to be critical of the seminary because it's a seminary yeah. and so that is all to say i'm thankful for them pouring in my lives and uh, investing in my life and i'm thankful for the southern seminary it's, it's been a good experience yeah yeah that's great matt when did you start at northwoods I started in summer of 2015. 2015. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's actually months after I was voted on. Yeah. Because I was voted on around Easter yeah. of 15. People may not even know this. I came here as the family pastor. That's right. And served as family pastor until COVID-ish times. And then that's right. switched over to worship pastors. And that's right. So I think been doing with the worship thing for about three years. That's but. right. It's been a journey. Yeah, I say that because so the church enacted a sabbatical policy last year, and the sabbatical policy for the pastors of Northwoods uh, is it, once you have served for seven years, you have the opportunity to receive a sabbatical. The church was kind enough last year that I was the first recipient of that policy and was able to take two months off. Mm -hmm. it, it was a benefit to me. From a tenure perspective, you're the next guy in line. Yeah. And you've been here, it'll be nine years this summer. Yeah. And so you're the person who gets a sabbatical this year. Yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited to, just from the, I'm, and very thankful for just Northwood's family, just in general. This has been a great home for our family since Gwen was about, I think nine years old. Yeah. And so she's grown up here and she doesn't consider herself a Virginian anymore. She may not even consider herself a Hoosier. She's <laughs> a child of nowhere, but this has just been a great place to serve. And we're thankful for our Northwoods family and thankful for this opportunity to do sabbatical. It's great. Yeah, it's good. We're recording this on Monday, May the 20th. When does your sabbatical technically start? Actual Memorial Day. Okay. And so We'll be serving this Sunday for church. We'll be by last worship service before sabbatical. And then June and July, all of the Sunday services will be led by Pastor Darren. He's going to do a great job. Mm -hmm. And then the last week of July, I come back in preparation for a leading 
the first service in August. Mm -hmm. And so that's the time frame that I'll be away. Yeah, that's great. When you think of the idea of a sabbatical, it, it really is a blessing from the church to us because not every church does this. No, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We are in the minority of churches. I am grateful for it. I believe that it's a benefit to the church as well as to the pastor who receives it. What do you think about the idea of a sabbatical? Yeah, I think obviously from my perspective is great, but there are churches out there that have a sort of hardness towards their pastors. Mm -hmm. I've served in those churches, volunteered in those churches before where there's a lingering criticism of any pastor that's not working hard enough, which is often an unfair type of criticism because people have no idea what happens in the pastor's week from Monday through Saturday. There's just a lot of work and preparation that goes on in the pastor's life. I think people also don't understand sometimes how tethered to the church we are. That's right. We don't work normal schedules. Christmas time is a busy time of year. Easter time is a busy time of year. When you're serving in family ministry, summertime is a busy time of year. That's right. And so there's just large periods of time where people are generally taking vacations, where as a pastor, you are tethered to the church in one way or another. And whether you're not physically present, your phone is ringing on various things or your email's going or your text is going. And so pastoring is one of those jobs where it just requires a lot of attention. It's not like you're pulling a, a nine to five, you clock in and you clock out, and then that's the end of the story. There's a lot of after hours meetings, a lot of time away from family, a lot of sacrifices that are made with family. And we don't work normal hours. We're essentially on call a lot. And so to have an intentional time where we are getting some rest is, is really important, including my time at Calvary Heights, which is my previous church. I mean, this has been 13 years of nonstop pastoral service, which I'm blessed with, and it's been good, but there's been lots of wear and tear on my family. So right, sure, thankful for the time. Yeah. What has your experience been in the process of burnout? Have you ever, have you ever considered yourself close to that when it comes to ministry? Yeah. And I think the closest time was honestly during COVID, yeah. weirdly enough. Yeah. I think that was a major stress on all of the church staff, just from a week to week perspective of not knowing what was going to happen, whether the church is going down in flames. And essentially for every single ministry, you've got to reinvent the wheel. That's right. For that particular VBS. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That the was amount of work that went into that was crazy. Absurd. It was an absurd year of VBS. Yeah. And so it was a lot of work. And during that same time, too, we transitioned from our previous worship pastor to me serving as a worship pastor. And so there was a lot of crazy stuff going on 2019, 2020 yeah. time frame. Took some toll on our family and took some toll on my personal mental health. And it's good to have some time to recharge. Sure. Yeah. yeah. What do you hope to accomplish during the sabbatical? Just spiritually? practically, what are you hoping to see happen? Yeah, I think the main thing is just to get untethered from church. Yeah, I think that's, while. people are, will hear that. And so when I worked for the state convention from 2012 to 2015, I was able to go to work, come home, and be at home. Yeah. And I never knew what that was like. Yeah. I, like, honestly, you when you're not pastoring and you have, like, a normal job, mm -hmm. the normal job, like, you, when you leave, you leave. Yeah. And I don't think, for those of you who are listening, you're, like, untethered from church. We never can turn it off. No. And that's inherent. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not evil. It's just it's the way it is. Yeah, and I think if you look at any of the terms for pastoring that are in the Bible— Overseeing yeah. is a constant thing. That's right. Pastoring, shepherding, shepherding the flock that's right. is certainly the shepherd back in the Old Testament times. They're sleeping with the sheep. They're always around the sheep. And that's right. Uh, that's really the pastor's experience. That's that right. We care for you guys. Yes. If we're doing our job. That's right. We care for you guys. And so we're constantly thinking about how to help you grow and how to 
love on you guys, how to help with your problems and how to speak the word of God into your life. And so to be able to unplug from that is just a blessing. Sure. And I don't know that people think about that enough. Yeah, right. In my life, the greatest criticisms that will come towards me are not from others. The greatest criticisms that will come towards me are from me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I received some criticism. It is not unjust. I deserve it. Mm Mm-hmm. But I will promise that every criticism I have ever received from another person, I take that and I will magnify it. Right. Because I'm hard on myself as a leader. Sure. And so I said this last year went about, and this may not be your experience, but it took me six weeks before I ever felt as if I was untethered. Yeah. I remembered going home and saying to Amy, I feel different. Yeah. And her response was, it took you six weeks. To feel different. And my hope for you is it'll happen a lot quicker than that. Right. But but I think that the point of that being it takes a bit to be able to decompress from being in it all the time. Yeah. I think I heard a podcast where it was talking about vacations and studies about vacations Mm -hmm. that it often takes people when they're on vacation two full weeks to feel uncompressed from their work life. Yeah. And you think about that. How long is somebody's typical vacation? Yeah. Like less than a week. That's right. And so that people never really get uncompressed That's from right. their work situation, even in secular work. And That's so right. for us, it's different. I think spiritually and just family wise, we're in a unique position. It's coming at a good time that we have a kid that's transitioning from the home to school. Yeah. And so she's going where? She's going to Clemson. Clemson University. University. And my dad is in mourning. Uh, I am currently wearing a Virginia Tech hat. In honor of him, he's coming tomorrow. I've got to get my allegiances correct. <laughs> and so he's sad about, but he's excited for her. And But, you know, I think he was hoping on tech. So she's not a turkey. She's a tiger. <laughs> so do y'all expect to do anything fun? Yeah. So we're going to take some time right off the bat. We're going to do some vacationing, see some of the big national parks in Utah, the Grand Canyon, and that thought process was intentional sure. is to go somewhere where we're away from yeah, no, that's good. the phone and away from distractions. No, that's great. So that'll enable us, number one, to be away from church, but also to intentionally be together. Yeah. And so this is the last two raw. We could potentially have a kid that goes to Clemson and she just stays there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, that's which, right. which is great. That's your greatest hope for yeah. your child is that you send them off and you kick them out of the nest and they don't want to come back because they're successful. Yeah, and I think Zach mentioned that the goal is to shoot the arrow. Yeah. I think that's a very fair picture. But what is there anything that as you move towards the sabbatical that you're expecting might be difficult? I think just unplugging is difficult. Yeah, I think right. you're worrying about this or that or you have a random thought. It's almost like, did I leave the garage open or did I leave the stove on type of thoughts. Oh. Where I've been on vacation before, and I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> this certain thing comes to mind is, oh, I better tell whoever is in charge of worship or in charge of the media booth in terms of this is something. And so you'll have those random thoughts like, oh, it's Tuesday. This has got to happen on Tuesday. My rhythm of the week is pretty standard in terms of you and I talk about the sermon on Monday, and then I get music together on Monday and start practicing Tuesday. and getting the band ready and we have practice on Thursday. And then on Saturday, I come into work and make sure everything's ready for Sunday. And there is a natural wave of my life that uh, there's a certain rhythm that happens and it's going to be weird getting out of that rhythm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What is your family thinking about the sabbatical? I think that they're excited about it. And I, to some extent, I don't know that we, well, I think it's intentional that we haven't got it fully planned out. Yeah, right. That we're going to take vacation for two weeks and then I'm going to a, a worship conference with Sovereign Grace Ministries at, out in Louisville, Kentucky, which that should be fun. But the rest of the sabbatical, I've got zero plans. We'll probably go hang out with my parents some. Sure. But other than that, may tinker around some stuff around the house, but we'll probably visit some other churches and whatever the Lord brings. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. That's good. One of the things that I just sort of want to say to the church before we're done with this is thank you for how the church 
treats the pastors. Right. Once again, I believe that this is a blessing to the pastors in helping pastors recoup, move away from, if you would, issues of burnout. But I I also believe that it is a blessing to the church Mm -hmm. because you want healthy pastors leading healthy churches. Yeah. Generally, unhealthy pastors do not lead healthy churches. Yeah. And so when the church makes decisions, any church makes decisions that they want their pastors to be spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, physically healthy, that's a win. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a win, and I believe that decision is a wise one. I had a sabbatical last year. You're having it this year. Next year, it's not because of we're doing this on an annual basis. It's the every seven years, and in your case, it's been nine. Yeah. But every seven years, someone deserves and receives the a sabbatical policy. And ne- next year, I believe it's Darren. Yeah, and, it should be. And he fulfills the rights for that. I just want to say to the congregation, thank you for allowing us to, to have this gift. Yeah, this may be some inside baseball, but I don't know if you've experienced this. Every pastor that I've talked to outside of the church that they ask about the sabbatical, their response is, how can I get that in my church? Yeah, that's right. Because this is a pretty rare thing that we're a part of a church that cares for its pastors this way. And so definitely thank you to the church for caring for us this way. It rarely occurs in other churches, I would say. Yeah, I agree. And we're in a, a time where, like, even after this, we go to lunch, and we're going to have conversation, Matt and Darren and I will, about about how we can make sure that you're able to fully unplug. Because that's our heart. Mm-hmm. Our heart is we desire that in your life. And I would say to the church, as you see Darren Garten specifically, be kind and gracious towards Darren, because yeah. Darren is going to be leading us in mm-hmm. our time of worship. And Darren is very capable, very competent. He leads worship well. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that period of time. But he has also been serving our church in other ways. Darren has, to a great degree, on a staff perspective, taken the lead on the building. Mm -hmm. And the next few weeks, we'll probably have some building stuff going on. Who knows where we'll be with the building by the time you get back. I. Lord willing, ground will be broke. Yeah. And so that's my hope. I hope so. I hope so. You never know what to – hopefully the rain will stop and we have some time to <laughs> that's right. get some stuff in. That's yeah, right. That'd be nice. Well, man, enjoy yourself, brother. Thank you. I will. And let me just say that there are people that have asked already, are we coming back? And oh, yes, yeah. that's the plan. We have no plans on moving to South Carolina. That's Gwen's thing. She's already threatened us that you cannot move to South Carolina. So that out of the, all 50 states is out. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, well, just so that you know, my expectation is is that you will be here for years to come. And so there you go. Yeah. And so that's out there. I guess it's probably wise before I say good, uh, you know, so long as a premier host, I should ask, do, what is their plan with the podcast w- over the next couple of months? Yeah. So we have the amazing Rachel Bland that is coming in and she has hosted podcasts before and she's going to talk about some women's ministry issues here over the summer and so we'll have her guest hosting the podcast over the summer guys i think you can still listen to those podcasts i think you can too yeah just listen in well Well, i know that i will i've heard that dr jamie do who is the president of new orleans baptist theological seminary his wife tara do is going to be interviewed by rachel and i'm very much looking forward to that interview i think that'll be intriguing. I know that she teaches some of the classes at New Orleans Seminary, and that'll be a lot of fun to listen in on. And I want to encourage you to check that out. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thank you guys for being a part of our Northwest Church Matters podcast, and we look forward to being a part of this again in the future. Yeah. Y'all have a great day. See you in two months. Thanks for tuning in to the Northwoods Church Matters podcast. If you'd like to find out more about Northwoods Church, you can visit us at our website, www.northwoodschurch.org. Again, that's www.northwoodschurch.org.